All right, today we're going to look at a uh, Southworth electric pallet jack. So this is electric in the uh, lifting side of things. It does not have uh, powered wheels. So I'll just uh, do a quick operation of this and then we will uh, take a look at it in a little more closer detail. So this has an emergency stop button. Which you gotta turn if you're gonna use it. There's just a toggle switch for going up and down. There's two stages. You can see the second stage is faster. It is a uh, smaller piston. So it goes uh, up relatively quickly. It's just an electric switch, so you don't have great control over lowering it. As you're putting it down, the second stage or the bottom stage is slower. So it says it's uh, 3,300 pounds of capacity. But keep in mind that's only for the bottom stage. The uh, top stage is closer to 2,200 pounds or 2,000. You can check in the manual. So you can see that it turns. It goes back and forth. You can turn. You can turn the handle just a little bit past 90 degrees to make uh, take turns. If you are inside of a small area like this or inside of a truck, this battery might give you grief. It gets in the way from time to time. Still move it. At some point, it's going to put the brakes on. So, right about there, I'm not sure what the height is. I can actually check. At about uh, 11 and a half inches to the floor, to the top of the fork, it uh, stops moving. The brakes are on. There's brakes here. Let's put this up all the way and then we'll take a look at it. They make a longer version of this. This is the uh, regular length. It, uh, if you look at it carefully, you might think that this might be made by another manufacturer, and you are correct. So this is a 2007 Southworth model, and uh, it's made in Denmark by Logitrans. So you can get some information there. You can get the uh, operator's manual from uh, Southworth and it's like a simplified version of the Logitrans manual. So you can get parts from both of these companies. So this has some information there. It's built in 2007. I think Southworth makes their own now because this uh, top component here is different now. So uh, this one does not have the built-in battery charger on it. It just has a, uh, a quick connect there that you could uh, hook up a charger. I think it's an 11 amp charger that they come with. There's a battery gauge here. Mine sits at around 50% most of the time unless you're charging it. And then uh, it goes 100% or final charge. The guy I bought this from said the battery was uh, kind of near the end at this point. There's some more information down here. So it's the PT-33-E. That's Southworth's label. There's some kind of little storage compartment in here. It's not bolted on in this case, but uh, I guess you could chuck some tools in there if you needed to. I am not a logistics person, so I can't tell you how great this thing is to use all day, every day, or anything like that. According to the manual, if that hose breaks, the uh, cylinder will lock up. It's a special hose or a fitting on the hose, so you got to keep that in mind if you're going to get a hose made locally. You can see a bit of oil leakage on this particular unit. Bit of oil weeping there. And a bit of oil weeping here. But generally, good. This was uh, obviously not used a lot because the paint's not all worn off of it. But it is uh, 13 years old. And it's got the double front wheels. I think some of the other products do not have double front wheels. Some of them have a parking brake in the bottom of it. But realistically, if you have space to put this in your trailer and lift it up to 11 inches, it won't move. So you don't necessarily need a parking brake, but this one does not have it. So here's uh, the main part of it. So it's just got a pump with a reservoir on the bottom and uh, a maxi fuse and along with some relays. 
I think I looked up this motor, yeah, it's from France, and they use red and blue for a positive and negative, which is kind of a bit of a curiosity to me. Something is being removed here, which would be pretty obvious if you check the manual as to what that is. This goes up to the controller for the emergency stop. Pretty simple device. Some big relays in there. And then I like these battery connectors actually. I've never seen this before. So it's sort of like a, a toolless battery connection. You can just take it off like that, put it back down. Forgive me for doing this one handed. And it's back on. How many amps that's good for, I'm not sure. It is made by this outfit here. I'll try to provide a link in the description in case you want to use this for something else. I could think of a, a thousand different uses for that. Obviously all battery related. So uh, this battery is not the right one to be in it, but you can see it's a 78DT battery here, it's just some kind of a deep cycle battery I believe, but uh, I'll need to get a replacement. And then this rubber part is torn, it's supposed to go down over here. So anyway, to charge this, I just take the cover off, and I've got a little uh, battery tender that I use from NOCO. I think the, in the US it's a different brand, but it's uh, they're all the same. These automatic chargers are okay. But if the battery is dead, dead, and it doesn't detect the voltage, it's no good. Which is very annoying. So you have to keep a, a conventional battery charger around as well. If you let your battery get down, you need to get it back to life. So I guess we'll take a quick look underneath. Like this thing is very well done. I haven't seen any lubrication points in it. Might be something in the manual talking about that, but I've not seen anything. This slides on some wheels. A bit of tape up there. So then they're talking here to keep the uh, weight far back. Like this thing is 3,300 pounds. Like you get this under the axle of your car and try to lift it, but it would probably uh, lift the back instead of lifting your vehicle. It's not, it doesn't have the counterbalance that a forklift has, but uh, I'm going to be using this because as you can see, I got a bunch of pallets in the garage. I sold my house, so I've, uh, that's sort of how I ended up buying this thing. I only paid under a thousand dollars for it, Canadian, and they're worth like five thousand dollars American new. So keep an eye out on Craigslist or Kijiji. You never know what you might find. So uh, hopefully this has been useful. Uh, let's just show you the uh, controller here. So then if you uh, reset that, you gotta turn it. So it stops it from going down as well as up. I think I'd mentioned it earlier, but because it's just an electric switch, you do not have fine controls over this, like you can't perform surgery with it. So if you got something very fragile on it, you might want to be careful. But I think as a work platform, it's great. It will go over fairly rough ground. Like that hole there is about an inch and a half into the floor. But obviously if your floor is better condition, the better it's going to be operate because this uh, wheel is only like an eighth or a quarter off of the floor, at which point uh, if you're on a bit of an angle it'll support you, but then you can't move. So hopefully you found this uh, useful. I recommend buying one of these if they come up. So, and just uh, the biggest drawback being that there's not enough space with this in some locations. And there's no manual pump, it's purely electric. So you need uh, a means of charging it. So thank you for watching.